Hey everybody, welcome to Margin Notes. Our journey today uh, is, is a unique journey. We take a look at the Day of Atonement, the very first Day of Atonement, and that begins right now. The first Yom Kippur, the first Day of Atonement is recorded in Leviticus 16. And Leviticus 16 starts with a stern warning for Aaron the high priest. You see his sons, two of his sons, did something very wrong. They went into the tabernacle, into the tent of the meeting, into that sacred place. And they they gave sacrifices that weren't authorized by God. They, they were involved in something that God didn't approve. King James version of the Bible calls their activity strange fire. And as a result, they died right there. Aaron is warned that the same will happen to him unless he enters the tabernacle only in a certain way and at a certain time as prescribed by God. Scripture is beautiful and it points continuously to Jesus. Leviticus 16.4 tells us, He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen undergarment on his body, and he shall tie the linen sash around his waist and wear a linen turban. These, the Scripture tells us, are the holy garments. And it goes on to say, and he shall bathe his body in water and then put them on. You see, all of this points to Jesus in, in an incredible way. It's, it's amazing. You see, Jesus set aside his unknowable, incomprehensible glory and the adornments of God and he became flesh. He became common to walk with us. The word became flesh. We learn this in John chapter 1. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1, 14. Jesus set aside His unknowable, His incomprehensible, His immeasurable glory and the adornments of God and He became common. He became flesh to walk with us. Now Aaron the high priest points to Jesus. You see, normally the high priest was adorned in robes with fine needlework and, and colorful threads. Uh, it, it was adorned with precious stones. But on this day, on the Day of Atonement, on Yom Kippur, he wears nothing but common linen. He becomes common as Christ did for us. And so we see that prophetically, Leviticus points to God who became flesh. Galatians 4.4 reads, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of woman and born under the law. You see, Jesus was under the law, subject to the law. And being under the law, Jesus had to follow it. And so, therefore, we see that He was baptized before He began His ministry of redemption. Likewise, Aaron washed his body, washed his flesh, before making atonement for the people, for their redemption. Seven is the number of completeness and perfection. Aaron dipped his finger in the blood of the sacrificial animal seven times and he sprinkled it on the mercy seat seven times. Leviticus 16, 14 and 15. This points to the day of atonement, the real day of atonement, when Jesus' blood was sprinkled for us seven times. It's amazing the story never changes. You see, consider the symbolism. The crown of thorns was pressed into Jesus' scalp and he bled for us. His back was laid open during the scourging, the whipping. His right hand and left hand were pierced. That's four. His feet left and right were pierced. That's six. And finally his side was pierced. Seven times his blood was shed. His blood was sprinkled for us. Now, what is the mercy seat? Remember Indiana Jones, and the, remember the golden box, the Ark of the Covenant, and the lid that had a cherub or an angel on one side and a cherub on the other side, one at the head and one at the foot? And that is the mercy seat, the area between the cherubs, between the angels. That is the mercy seat. Seven times Aaron sprinkled blood on the mercy seat. The blood of the sacrifice is sprinkled on the mercy seat. Now, let us turn our attention to the real mercy seat. 
Let us join Mary Magdalene weeping outside the empty tomb. We pick up the story in John chapter 20, verses 11 through 23. And the story tells us that, that she's weeping and then she turns again to the tomb and she stoops and looks inside one more time. And as I picture the story, I can hear her gasp because inside the tomb, sitting on the mercy seat, one on the left, one on the right, one where Jesus' feet had been, one where his head had lain, are two angels. And between them is the burial clothing, the cloth that they wrapped Jesus' body in, and it's stained with blood. Also the stone, the slab stone, is stained with blood, blood that came from seven wounds, from his scalp, from his back, from his hands, from his feet, and from his side, seven wounds. Aaron sprinkled blood seven times. The story is complete. And we see, for the first time in our lives, the real mercy seat. God, we come before you in such gratitude. God, we are thankful to you that we can approach you in confidence through the veil which you rent. God, we are thankful your story doesn't change. From the Pentateuch to Revelation, the story is the same, and it continues today, unchanged. God, we are grateful for the mercy seat, for it was there that you rose and completed the work for our salvation. God, let us live our lives, God, to glorify you and lead others to you. Hey now, if you're watching this at youtube.com, subscribe and click the bell icon so you won't miss a thing. And if you're watching this on our ministry website, be sure to sign up with the newsletter. Hey, I'll see you next time.